Orkney, where the Atlantic meets the North Sea. Rugged coastline, treacherous seas, rolling green fields and over 70 islands where all four seasons can be felt in a day. Gardening here is extreme. Patience and persistence are essential. Luckily, Caroline and Kevin Critchlow are blessed with those virtues. Wow, what an amazing location and a wonderful garden. <laughs> well, Carol, six years ago, there was nothing here at all, just weeds and brambles. Mm -hmm. And so you've taken that on, uh, and as you say, nothing at all apart from maybe the outside dike? The outside walls were, were already here, but I built everything else. My goodness, it's absolutely superb. But, I mean, I said it's a wonderful location. You are really exposed, so presumably coping with the wind must be a real problem. One of the main problems is we get a lot of big waves on the pond and it just washes everything that's growing in the pond to this end, so it kills everything. So I've had to build concrete pillars along the pond and then drill in metal spikes and then skewer the plant baskets in and that keeps them there. I mean that's absolutely incredible, you know, you state your herbaceous plants, but I mean how strong are the winds anyway? Oh, they're in excess of 100 miles an hour. Wow, I mean that must mm. be quite hard for you. It is hard, it's hard to stand up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so you do the building but you're more about the planting? I'm more about the plants. Okay, well let's have a look at some of your planting. Okay. One of my favourite plants in the garden is this Acer, which seems to grow despite the wind. I brought it up from Derbyshire as a stick. I love the colour of it, but you can see it's not going higher than that wall. It's almost like that you need to grow it as a shrub rather than a tree, and it's Crimson King, which is quite a hardy plant. Yeah. Um, any other examples of the problems with the wind? Yes, we've got the Nepeta, which I grow by the pond, because, of course, it's too extreme here to grow lavender. So I grow the Nepeta, but it will only grow on the south-facing edge of the pond and not on the other side. It's really, really strange, isn't it? It's all about location. Yep. But, I mean, some things that are doing particularly well are the geraniums and mm. some of the ones with the real hairy leaves. Yeah, the geraniums up here are fantastic and they'll just stand anything. They'll stand the wind, the wet, the rain. And we've got lots of lovely Orkney geraniums that have been bred here. So that's great. And so, I've got a few of those. So that's a good doer. Grasses with the narrow leaves. Yeah, the grasses, they're, they're thugs, there's no doubt about it. But what they do here is they provide wind protection for the more tender plants. So, for example, outside you can see that I've got some massive lilies, really tall, which you think would snap in this wind but because they're supported by other grasses then they work beautifully and I've also got a lovely circium which is sheltered by the twiggy structure of the fuchsia. And that's a beautiful plant isn't it? Love it, sort I of love thistle -like it. Sort like flowers. Yeah, very Scottish. What about the vegetables, do you grow them? I do grow vegetables but when we go and see them be gentle with me because I'm a novice. Oh, yeah, come on, let's have a look. <laughs> So as you can see, the vegetable garden is south-facing, but even though it's south-facing, you've still got to have the protection of the wind fencing along this side. Yes, yeah, so more shelter, and mm. this is actually filtering the wind, rather than a wall where it kind of comes over and Absolutely. you get that sort of turbulence. Perfect for the plants. Things like the broad beans doing really well? Broad beans doing well. They're like children to me. I raised them from seed in my little potting shed. You don't use the dwarf variety? No. I don't think they get very far, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> what else does well for you? Well, um, the peas are doing very well this year. The alliums do really well. We have lots of lovely onions. And the tatties, they look good. The potatoes are great. And beetroots last year did very well. This year, absolutely hopeless. Parsnips last year, totally hopeless. This year, fantastic. Always a surprise, gardening. And what about the soil? Because, I mean, it looks really good. Did you have to bring that in? The soil's fantastic. We've got five feet of topsoil here. In fact, my neighbour up on the hill says that it's been washed down and we've pinched hers. We've um, had to barrow some of it in, obviously, to make the raised beds. And we've got a good base of um, pig manure from our friend, the pig farmer, over the hill. Absolutely brilliant. And obviously good drainage, because I know in particular this year you've had a lot of rain, haven't it's you? It's been very, very wet, but we've had no problem with drainage here at all. Any new projects on the go? Yep, we've got an embryonic courtyard garden. OK, well, I expect that's Kevin's work, isn't it? It is. Let's see if I can go and find okay. it. OK. Kevin, tell me, are you a dry stain tiger to trade or is it something that you've picked up? 
No, it's something I picked up. I was a farmer in the Feet District, so my granddad taught me to wall. So completely different stone, though. What's it like dealing with the stone in Orkney? Uh, well, the cobbly limestone of Derbyshire is, is couldn't be more opposite. This is flat. It laminates. It splits like, but it's it's lovely stone. Does that mean, oh, though, to get things level, you've got to find little pieces? Yeah, it takes a long time to get any height because they're so thin. Now, picking out one or two of the features, I mean, I love the cone at the bottom. How long did that take you to make? That took me a week to build that. It looks superb. And what about, like, this little ball here? That. It took me a day to build that, but I built it in two halves and stuck them together. Um, it looks that's... superb. Mm. Any feature in particular you'd like to show me, though? I'd like you to look at my boat I built. Right, just over there? Yeah, just over there. Hi there. What a lovely place to sit. <laughs> Now, the boat, were you slightly inspired here because it is a coastal location? Yeah, I was, and because uh, we're so close to the sea, I thought we needed somewhere else to sit in the garden, I thought I'd build a boat. Mm, absolutely superb, and it's nice to have somewhere else to sit. Also, you've got there. You've got to have a wheelhouse, <laughs> and that's mine. <laughs> that's his. And seating, I mean, do you have seats all over the garden? We've got seats all over the garden because, um, obviously, the wind comes from every direction, so it's good to have a seat to get out of the wind, but also when you've got a garden like this with such fabulous views all the way around, you want lots of different seats to enjoy lots of di different views. And let's face it, when it's like this, we feel like millionaires. Yeah, don't you, Jess? And I think you're a fantastic team because you're the hard landscaper, you're the soft landscaper. I'm not too sure what Crumble does. She's just a softy. <laughs> and um, as you say, this is a view to die for. Yep. Can I stay? You can. We don't <laughs> want to let you go. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been our pleasure. <laughs>